I did here again mainly for informational purposes for you or just some of the other things that they, they've added to it. There's some new operational rules uh, that are out there. Uh, there are some new, uh, as I said, enhancements to the instant experts and those types of things. So with that, I believe that's all we have on the slides for the moment. So let's pop over here and actually take a look uh, at the product there. So I'm on the uh, the main console view uh, here within uh, BCM, and of course I have all the modules installed. So you see, as we talked about from the slides, we've got the discovery pieces, we've got those device groups and user groups, for example. We've got package deployment, OS deployment, operational rules, patch management, compliance application. And we're going to run through the ones that can logically uh, be shown here. Here's a list of my current activities. Here's some uh, com uh, details on the devices that I've got ha out here that uh, I'm tracking. Here are some of those instant experts that just kind of tell you how to do something, or you can then actually switch over to a, a wizard that says, show me how to create a discovery and, and those types of things. And they're really simple to use, which is why it's so easy to get this machine installed in a relatively, uh, this solution installed in a relatively short per uh, period of time. So here is, you know, how do you go out and do that initial agentless discovery uh, that, that you've got out there? You can say, well, I'm going to go in and configure, you know, what I want to do, and I'm going to come in here and indicate, do I want all devices, uh, in this case, Windows? Do I want uh, Linux, Mac, Unix? So as the proliferation of uh, uh, Mac laptops is out there, this is a great tool because it, it can recognize those just like it can recognize a Windows machine from a discovery and, uh, and inventory standpoint. Obviously, the ability to get our network printers and routers and switches and, and hubs and those types of things via an SNMP. And of course, we will also discover what virtual devices that you have out there running either Hyper-V or uh, you know, some form of VMware, ESX, or, or whatever. When I go out to do that discovery, I can have a target list or I can create a new target list. I can say, let's do that discovery immediately, or I could set up a time when I wanted to do that, uh, that initial run that's out there. Uh, where do I want to store the results of a particular folder? Again, you just see we're just stepping through what it is that uh, that we're trying to do here. So again, it's saying, well, for whichever ones of these types of devices you're going to try to discover, of course, you're going to need to put in whatever your credentials would be in order to uh, be able to see those devices. Then you would come in and give it an IP range, or you know maybe you've got a a list out there of the ones that you want to see. So I want to do it the machines on this network or, you know, if I'm doing another discovery run where the client's already there, I could say, let's just do a refresh scan on all of our Windows 7 machines. So it's really just a matter of, uh, you know, walking this thing right through here as far as what we need to do. So once I, once I pick those, we've got it. And if you're doing it on a scheduled list, of course, you'd say, well, tonight at uh, 11 p.m. or whatever is when I want to run it. So pretty simple. And again, there are these agents, there are these wizards for rolling out your agent, OS deployment, package creation, operational rules, the discovery. They're all out there. And again, it's why in a relatively short number of days, we can get this entire suite of products installed, get you trained on them, and you're in, uh, you're in complete control there. So once I do that discovery, this is what I'm going to be able to bring back. I'm going to see everything that it discovered out there. I'm going to see, you know, what network devices it's uh, it's hanging off of there. And once this agent has been pushed out to these devices, that gives me the ability to do additional things. So here's a Windows 7 machine. If I right mouse click on that, you see I could do remote control. I could do a, a, you know, right now what I know about the device is from the last scan, but if I wanted to say audit now, it would rescan it, that one machine, bring me the results back in. I could do an inventory summary. Uh, I could do any number of things. Let's look at an inventory summary, and this will give you an idea of what are we discovering. So for Windows, you're basically doing a WMI pool, right? So I know the computer, I know what the name of it is, I know, you know the operating system details as far as service packs, the BIOS information, what kind of processor it has in it, you know, what's the disk size, what are the partitions, the NIC cards that are in there, the memory DIMMs that are in there, typical types of things that you would expect. 
but we will also then bring back in a list of what uh, what software is installed on that device, the manufacturer version number, uh, where did we find it? Is it in Add Remove Programs or you know something else that I've done there? We can bring back the settings around security. Hey, does he have his firewall turned on? Do or our DAT files and their antivirus have they been updated in the last seven days? Again, whatever you know you want to set up from that standpoint. And then most importantly, while I'm looking at this particular machine, let's see how compliant this person is. So here we have obviously set up compliance rules around spyware programming, antivirus installation, firewalls, uh, minimum hardware configuration compliance rules, some rules around Internet Explorer, around patches, uh, around power settings. And so every time the machine checks in with the agent, I can very quickly take a snapshot and see how compliant that particular machine is. And, of course, I can do it by machine, which obviously means I can uh, do it by the, uh, the entire group there. So pushing that one little inventory discovery and sticking that agent on there certainly gives us a lot of information that we can then leverage as we're trying to work with these clients. And one other thing that you get about uh, uh, when, you, when you're doing that about a particular machine, let me close these up on the right here, you can kind of see where we are, is you get all the financial asset management about this particular Windows box. Now, obviously, we didn't discover, you know, what did we pay for it and the PO number and all of that, but we can very easily enter this manually or through a spreadsheet so that we now have that tool because, again, if you're leveraging this type of information while you're over in the service desk, wouldn't it be helpful as that, as that technician was trying to troubleshoot a machine to say, oh, look, this machine is six years old. I wonder how it missed the tech refresh and not spend a lot of time trying to triage what the issue is. You know, let's submit a ticket to his manager for approval to get a, uh, a new device out there. And so you can see the types of information you would expect, uh, purchase order, purchase date, did we buy extended warranties uh, here on the tool. And, you know, we can even have this go in and perform the depreciations uh, against the asset if you're not doing that in some other formal asset management system. Uh, we can do it right here within this tool. So a lot of great information comes from having uh, placed that agent on the box, uh, and then we, we, get that, uh, we get that type of detail. I talked about the user groups and the device groups here, and uh, just to give you an idea, you know, here are all my Windows 7 machines. Here are my non-IT assets, right? Maybe I set up a group for projectors and video equipment and security cameras that I, maybe I'm not discovering, but I still want to track them in here. Well, I can create a group so I can easily say, well, I'm just concerned with this type of device. And, and, and one great way to think about also how uh, these device groups can be is let's say that you are doing patch management. Of course, one of the frequent things, as we all know, that gets patched is Java, right? Well, maybe you've got a certain set of machines that cannot run on the latest Java patch because of whatever idiosyncrasy those applications on that box have. Well, I could dynamically say, hey, any machine that has the ABC application, I'm going to call that the one that has to have a lower level of Java, any machine that has the lower level of uh, that has the uh, ABC application on it, stick them in a group called non-Java update, for lack of a better thought here uh, during this presentation. And then what I can do is, when I get ready to apply my patches, I would I would exclude that group from a Java patch update. So the the be able to doing these device groups these user groups just makes it very easy to kind of slice and and dice not only the viewing of the assets but then what actions i might take on the assets there so let's pop down here to uh uh application management and let's specifically talk about you know software license management so here's all the software I'm tracking. Obviously, this is just a little demo system. You would have uh, a lot more details in there. But let's look at this Microsoft Office Professional, for example. So this graph shows me that we've purchased five of these, but we've only installed one, which is good. That says I'm, I'm in compliant, right? That's good to know. Uh, if I want to see how many, just verify that I did buy five licenses. You can see right here on the license tab, it shows me that I, I bought five. And oh, by the way, if I wanted to add more licenses, I'd just right-click and say, hey, I just bought 10 more. Now I've got 15 of them out there. Pretty simple to do. 
if I want to know where that one is installed, uh, where that uh, one is installed, I could do it from here, right? I could say, let me see where that device is installed, and it'll bring up the one that actually has it on there. I could come in here and say, uh, and when I'm in the machine level looking at it, I can see the compliance levels at that level as well. So all of that is kind of uh, out there. So that's where it's not installed. Let's see where we are installed there. There's the one device that has that particular piece of software on it and very easily be able to come in and uh, distinguish that out there. So that's how we're tracking it. Again, as we go and do another discovery run and say, okay, now our update account of, in this case, Microsoft Office Professional has hit six. We look back into here and where we say we've only bought five, you would immediately get the alert. You would have a, a graphic that was now in red saying that you were out of compliance and you could take the steps to remediate uh, either by buying more licenses or uninstalling it from somebody who had installed it, uh, obviously, without, without permissions and without going through, uh, going through change management there. Here, for example, is our uh, kind of our, our software catalog that we've got out here. Under here, you have application monitoring. So maybe I want to create a list of prohibitive applications. And just, again, lack of... Uh, things to do here. I just said, okay, we're not going to allow Notepad. Silly example, but, you know, Kazar, iTunes, uh, some kind of streaming service, maybe we want to say they are not allowed in their device, so we'll just create that on a blacklist. And again, if that machine checks in via the agent, it will tell us if something is out of compliance. And at a minimum, of course, we could send an email alert, we could run a report, and if you want to get real draconian, you can have it automatically uninstalled because just like we can distribute software packages, we can uninstall software packages as well. Uh, so again, uh, you're thinking about automating the life cycle of the, uh, of the asset as we kind of go through here. You saw on that first device that we queried, we looked at the compliance, right? We looked at it, had the firewall turned on and the power settings. They were compliant on some things, not on... Uh, not on other things. So again, you would just come in here and create what your compliance rules would be uh, as far as what you wanted uh, to have out there. Anything you wanted to measure against, uh, for example, I think we had one out there we talked about uh, uh, we might want to set up some hardware rules that we had out there. You know, you can certainly, uh, you can certainly do that. You could come out here and say that I want to set up that I've got a minimum of 15% uh, uh, free disk space. Uh, all machines need to have a minimum of two gigs. And again, I can immediately get an alert if somebody is out of compliance just by coming down, configuring those, and then turning, saying they're active and they're on from that, uh, from that particular standpoint. So under patch management is where we talked about, uh, you know, what are we going to uh, distribute patch-wise from a Windows and the third-party app side. So you're obviously going to set up uh, your patch detection. So, you know, here under my patch detections, let's look at my devices that I have scanned. Let's look at this one and kind of see what's, uh, what's there. So what, what missing patches does this one machine have that we're going to look at here? And here's the list of, of what's missing. You know, obviously could refilter this if I wanted to. If this person were having a problem and I'm sitting there on the service desk and I, I, I look at his missing patches, leveraging this tool through the service desk, right, I could come in here and just very easily say, oh, you know, I, we know for a fact that this is causing uh, big issues. I could just fix it right here on the fly, and it would immediately push that patch to that machine, having remediated the problem. I would then, of course, probably want to set up an actual patch job to find all of the machines that were missing that patch, and maybe tonight at a more uh, available time, push the patches out uh, uh, to that device under having then just set up a patch job. So here are my critical patches that are going to go out tonight. I've got them all uh, identified there. I can see you know, them by the assigned devices or by the device groups if I'm using uh, those leverages. I can see, you know, what for this patch job that we're going to run, what did we set up in the, whether we're doing quite more, what happens if we get an error, does a reboot have to done. So when we use the wizard to create the patch uh, job itself, you know, we set all of these, uh, these particular things in there. Uh, and, of course, you know, I can keep track of exactly how the job's been running over time and keep track of the issues that we've got 